Hey, um, Twitter friends and YouTube, this video will be on light. I did one on darkness, but not on light, ironically. And I want to kick this video off with a cool song that I used to love by DC Talk. I want to be in the light as you are in the light. I want to shine like a stars in the heaven. Oh Lord, be, I want the Lord to be my light and be my salvation. All I want is to be in the light. So that should be that all that anyone wants is to be in the light, because why would anybody want to be in the darkness? If you think about, you know, if you're in your house and if you don't have night lights, I have night lights everywhere in my house, but if you don't, it's like kind of scary. I think everybody's a little bit afraid of the dark, and I think there's a good reason for that because darkness is supposed to represent evil and Satan, and the light represents God and the children of the light, you know, Christians. So, what does the Bible have to say about light? John 8, 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Woot. And the main thing that is light is love. Um, because if you think of like light, it's happy and love is happy. Because it leads to good days and good relationships. So, yeah, you should want to have light and love in your life. Yeah, light is awesome. Um, yeah, God has a marvelous light that he gives um, part of it to each of us. You know, like I think how the tongues of fire happened at Pentecost, I think that was supposed to represent that you know, we're supposed to shine, we're supposed to be like fire shining out of the darkness. And that's what happens when we're baptized in the Holy Spirit or just when you receive the Holy Spirit. I don't think that there's two, like, it's not like you receive the Holy Spirit and then you're baptized. I think when you get saved, you get the Holy Spirit, that is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then you become a light to the world, you know, like Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Um, so shine for Jesus to you know, to break up the darkness. Uh, John 1, 5, the light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not overcome it. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking of like an analogy that if you're in a dark room and you just shine a tiny little light, it's not dark anymore. So it's like that, like even the tiniest effort that we might make to spread light in the world, it can make there be no more darkness. And that analogy really gave me a lot of hope because a lot of times it seems like the darkness is winning and that the light isn't overcoming the darkness. But if you just think about that, like if you're in a dark room and you just like, you know, turn on a, a lighter, you know, like a cigarette lighter or a candle and it's not dark anymore. Just like a tiny little bit of light can make all the darkness go away. So I hope that gives you guys hope that, you know, if you're in a dark situation or, you know, yeah, something that just seems hopeless. Just think about that. Just shining a little bit of light can make it so that there's no more darkness. So shine that light. Um, I like that song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Okay, Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Sometimes people are like, oh, you're not supposed to, I mean, obviously it's not good to brag, you know, love does not boast. But it is good for people to see the good things that you're doing so that they will praise God. Um, because if nobody ever sees, like, anything good, then, you know, then that's sad. Like, it's encouraging to see other people doing good things. Like, for example, if you go to church and you see people raise their hands and worship, that's encouraging because it's like, cool, like they really care about God just like I care about God, and that's encouraging. So hopefully these videos have that same effect. First John 1 John 1.7 If we walk in the light as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Yeah. So the more we walk in the light, we can have fellowship with other people because we're caring and self-sacrificing and not selfish. And we truly love other people 
that used to always be my prayer with a group of friends that I used to hang out with was, you know, God help us to love each other like you would want us to love each other, you know. So make that your prayer for like in your family that you guys will all love each other the way that God would want you to love each other and not just the way that you think you should love because a lot of times the way that we think we should love other people is like really to control them like oh but I'm helping them like no you're just controlling them and that's not love so we need to like redefine what love is and how we should show love and how other people would feel loved um you know really love is just giving people freedom and like backing off um for the most part and not trying to control their situation or anything about their life. If you really love someone, you well, like that phrase, if you love someone, you let them go. That's true. <clears throat> if you're like possessive of them, that's not love. Okay. Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Yeah. So it can feel like we're just walking around in darkness and we don't know what to do or where to go. But when we read the Bible, that gives us a little bit of direction or a lot of direction on how we should view our life, how we should view people in our life, uh, the decisions that we should make, um, what we should do with our time. You know, like ultimately the Great Commission, I think, applies to us every second of every day, you know, go into the world and make disciples of all nations. So really, that should be on your mind 24-7. It's on my mind 24-7. That's why I'm on Twitter. That's why I used to be on Facebook, because I'm always thinking, what can I say that will either encourage Christians or that will save non-Christians, you know? Like, that's always on my mind, and I hope it's always on your mind, too. It might just be because I have the gift of evangelism, or that's just what all Christians should be thinking about 24-7. I think they should. I don't know. Um, Ephesians 5, 8, at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Yeah. So most people had a pre-conversion self that was different than their conversion self and you were in darkness. For example, for me, I, I was raised in church, so I always knew about God, but I wouldn't say that I knew God. I didn't really decide to actually know God and have a relationship with him until I was 14 before that, I was kind of a bad kid. I guess, yeah, I probably really didn't think about God much before I was 14, or at least not like on a daily basis. Um, I didn't care about reading the Bible, but I did after 14, after I got baptized, and I started reading the Bible a lot. But before 14, I had some bad friends, and I got into, I tried smoking off and on. I wasn't like addicted, but um, that was like the cool thing to do, you know, so you could feel more grown up. So when I was like 12 or 13, I tried smoking, I tried drinking, I shoplifted a little bit. Um, really, I think it was all just a cry for attention. You know, I wanted attention from my mom, I guess, because she was very like uninvolved and didn't seem to care much about me and my brother. So that's probably why we did all that stuff. But she was depressed because my parents had just gotten divorced when I was 10. So she was really sad about that, that my dad was what he was he was a child molester and that was bad um yeah so what else did I do I would sneak out at night I had boyfriends um so yeah I was definitely in darkness I would say um yeah and I was just honest I would lie to my mom about I don't know well, there was one time me and my friend were smoking in my room and I said we were just lighting matches or something. <sighs> but, you know, the lie that Satan told me at that time was if you do all this stuff, you're going to be older than you are and you're going to be cool and people are going to like you. And it's true. I did have a lot of friends back then. Like I was pretty popular in junior high, but um, it wasn't a good popularity. You know, we were just all getting into trouble and doing the wrong thing. And it is ironic, you know, broad is the road that leads to destruction and narrow is the road that leads to light. And Joyce Meyer always says, if you want to have a lot of friends, you're going to have a lot of friends if you're on the road to destruction because it's a broad road. But if you want to be on the narrow road that leads to life, that leads to heaven, you're probably going to be lonely because there aren't as many people on that road. And what can light have in common with darkness? So if you're in light, 
You, you can't be friends with anybody who's in darkness, which really eliminates a lot of people. <laughs> so you kind of just have to get used to being lonely and it being just you and God a lot of the time if you're going to stay on that narrow path, you know. <sighs> and, you know, some people are on that path for a while, but then it gets too hard and they don't like being lonely, so they jump off of the path, the narrow path, and onto the wide path that leads to destruction. But that's their choice. You know, everybody has a free will. People can walk away from their faith. People can lose their salvation if they want to, if that's what they choose to do. And there's really not much that other people can do about it if someone decides to make that jump away from God. All you can do is keep trucking on, keep running your own race, and, you know, don't worry too much about what people around you are doing. You need to just focus on yourself and don't let other people falling away discourage you. Just keep doing what you know God wants you to do because ultimately we're only responsible for ourselves and getting ourselves to heaven, which I know it's by grace we are saved, but Jesus said to the one who endures to the end, they will be saved. So you have to put forth effort in your Christian walk to make sure that you stay saved and not shipwreck your faith. So I pray that bless you all. I pray that you all are in the light. If you're not, I'll say a prayer for you right real quick. Dear God, I pray for anyone watching this that they will, if they're in darkness, God, that they will see that they're in darkness and that they will want to be in your marvelous light, God. Help them to desire that help them to see it if they need to to make that jump into the light out of darkness help them to see if they are in darkness that they are and help them to cry out to you and to just say dear holy spirit please come into my heart and save me i admit that i am a sinner i need your help thank you for your free gift of salvation please um accept me into your family i want to be christian i want jesus to be the lord of my life Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. So I pray that you guys will all pray that prayer if you haven't. And God loves you. Have a great day. Bye.